Hello. Welcome back to Online Darts. We're here with Phil, the power tailor himself. Phil, back in seniors action, looking more yourself, looking in great shape as well. How's it going? better. Excited? I'm enjoying it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't get excited now at my age. I'm too old for excitement now. It'd probably kill me off if I got excited. Uh, but I'm, I am looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's something to get up for and practice for. It's, it's, it's nice. You know, when you retire, it, it does become a little bit boring. So, you know, you've got a practice board there. Get on the practice board and do your job. I remember speaking to you back at your house when we were doing the build-up for the first mm. World Championships and you were like, I want to win one of these. But now, is, is that important to you or not? Yes, 100% it is. I'm dying to win one, honestly, just to give me the bragging rights back. At the minute, nobody fears me and it's horrible. But I'd love to, you know, try and get a bit, more, get a bit of form back that I used to have. You know, be, a, be the player I used to be. But... If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, then I've tried my best. We've seen glimpses, we've seen a couple of nice little 11 dart legs mm. and a couple of big ton plus finishes. So the game is still there, but is it trying to find it consistently where before it was always there when you needed it? Yeah, but I was playing tournaments week in and week out. You know, I've probably done three or four tournaments in five, six years. You know what I mean? You're not match fit. It's like, like footballers, you know, you've got to get on that pitch and play in games to get your match fitness. And that's the only difference because the players I'm playing are playing in tournaments. And keep you match fit. That's the only difference, really, with them and me. When you listen to the qualifiers and, all, and that, they still want to play you, though. So that mark is still on your back. That target is still there for these qualifiers <laughs> to come and play you. It's on my back and on me for <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But, well, I suppose you're still a big name. It's like playing Raymond, you know, Barney. He's still got the big name. John Park still got that big name. You know, Eric had it. John Lowe had it. Jockey Wilson had it. Dennis Priestley. You know what I mean? You name players who you, you've been around for that many years. People know who you are. So. I suppose it is a bit. I used to love playing them players, so I know how they feel. As well, just looking at the whole tournament in general, there's t players coming towards the end of their PDC career. Obviously, mm. John Henderson's dropping in, but there's other names in and around that are over 50 now. Do you think yeah. we're at the point the seniors could literally take off any minute with these I players? Think so, I think so, yeah. I think you're right what you're saying. Yeah, could do. You know, the more players we get, credible players, the, the better it'll be. Peter Wright will be one who will come over when he's ready. I think Peter will join. You know, I think Gary Anderson may, may join. And then you start talking proper proper sponsorship and proper everything else. If they come over, then it's that real motivation to, to get back on the board. Because Gary Anderson. Because they're still playing at a good level as well. Is it ever? Yeah, yeah, of course it is. Yeah, I'd have to step up to the mark, definitely, and improve my game if they, them two came over. But that would doubt, shadow of a doubt. Loads going on in the world of darts as well, which we love to, to mm. pick your brain on. One name is on everyone's lips right now. It's in the target stable is, is Luke Littler at 16 years of age doing incredible things. Oh, Qualified what? for the World Championships for the first time, won his tour card, seeing huge averages, nine darters from someone at 16. I know that you like to look at all this. Are I you, do. Are you impressed? I am very impressed, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's definitely a one-off. He's another Michael Van Gaman, I think. And he's not frightened. He looks after himself. He does everything right. So the World Championships, sometimes I don't watch the first rounds. I'll definitely be watching Luke. Let's put it that way. So I don't want to put any pressure on him, but I hope he really does do well. Well, it made me laugh. The last player time he played at the Motor Super Series, he qualified. He uses a long straight dart. Yeah. And then he qualified, and he got a set of your little dumpy barrels out and started stacking them, and was still averaging mid nineties. Completely See? changed See? his everything from a stand up to, to stacking. See. And looked comfortable. It was just remarkable. He hasn't just got talent. He's got brains as well. Tell him. <laughs> Good on him. Good on him. Yeah. Why not? Why not mix it up a little bit? At 16, though, can the darting world, look, I'm including that as media, can we put too much pressure on these youngsters coming through, though? It all depends, really. I suppose it can. It depends on the youngster, really. I think there's been certain youngsters. Leighton Bennett, I think, had the pressure on him a little bit, and I think he's felt it a bit. So he might have to just get a bit more experience as, as he's going older, and he'll come back. And uh, young Luke, 16, he's got nothing to fear. He's got no responsibilities to worry about. You can just go up there, enjoy yourself and just let them flow. And that's the best way to be. Coming through the Target Elite One system as well has obviously helped him because there's that mentoring in place. Is that a great thing for these young kids? Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're getting experience. You're playing against your friends every week. You know what I mean? Because they all meet and they have, have games against each other. And they're all dedicated. You know, it's the same with the snooker. They have these places where they all go practicing together and that's the way to do it. It's way forward. Another big moment in darts, Fallon, first female to hit a televised nine dart. Obviously, you did the first one on Sky back in the day against Chris Mason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fallon's become the first female to hit a televised 
Nine Dark, the women's game is just on an incredible trajectory right oh, now. Oh yes, fantastic. I love watching Bo, love watching Fallon. The, the, the women's game now to me is getting just as exciting as the men's, if not even better in sometimes. Uh, Bo, Bo, when she plays in the World Championships, and Fallon, believe me, whichever man draws them, they're worried about it. They all practice their socks off, make sure they don't get beat. The way the JDC has worked, where the youngsters, there is no boundaries, they just play all together. Mm. Are we now seeing that, that the darts landscape is becoming a, a truly open field? It's not just men versus women anymore. It's more, it's the norm now that we are seeing women taking on the men in the darts. Why not? I think it's great. I think the women will sell more tickets than the men if they, you know, if they carry on doing what they're doing. Because it creates interest. A lot of people, when I'm going to shopping, if I go shopping or I go to the petrol station, wherever I go, will mention Fallon and mention Bo Greaves. You know what I mean? More than they'll mention Michael, say now, because they know Michael, but they, it's something new to talk about. Young Luke, they'll mention. You know, people that know the darts. I say, have you seen that young Luke? I say, yeah, I have. Yeah, he's good, and, and you know, when he's only get better, if he can get better, then he will. So let's just see what the future holds now. It's, it's exciting times, I think. Another one that I know that you've got a soft spot for, Nathan Aspinall went up on that famous Winter Garden mm. stage and won his first match play. Did mm. you watch Nathan? Uh, I uh, did, I did. I thought he played superb. Absolutely superb. Dead proud of him. He's got something in there, that, that aggression, that I know that, that you liked his attitude and his just rawness to the game. He's just a normal person. You know, if you meet Nathan, he'll be the same Nathan as when he had t 10 pence in his pocket instead of 10 million, because he'll have, he'll have millions in his pocket soon. And just keep doing what you're doing. Keep your feet on the ground, keep practicing, keep dedicated, and never look what you got in the bank. Always be skint, because that's your motivation. That was Nathan's motivation. That was my motivation, to, to, to make money for my family. And he's the same. So that's the best motivation you can have. We know you like to look at Darts Connect and when the tournaments are going on and the averages and everything like that. Do you think that maybe the top end of the game is struggling a little bit right now? Because it doesn't seem the numbers aren't as high as when the last couple of years where you were there, it was you and Michael, Gary and Raymond all there. The standard seems to have dropped a little bit. Do you think that's maybe well, overplaying a little bit? I think so, yeah. Well, of course it is. I mean, the top players, you, you, you're a victim of your own success. So if, you, if, you, if you're in that top five or top six and, you, and you're travelling all around the world week in and week out, Jet lag. I mean, <laughs> Barry never understood this jet lag. Oh, Matt Porter sometimes, but it is massive. And when you're tired, I mean, ment it's a mental game as darts. Besides a little bit of physical, not so much as football, obviously. But you've got to be right mentally wise. And if you go up there and you're tired, your focus isn't there. Your ment you know, your mental agility isn't there. So it is. And then you're playing players. These players have got to come back from travelling all around the world, which is great. Don't get me wrong. But then you've got to play players that haven't been doing that and not jet lag. Now, practicing five, six, seven hours a day, you're up against it and can play. Do you think something's got to give then at the top end of the game to let the, the elite flourish again? It's going to be difficult for the top ones to, to flourish again because they're all getting older. They've all got families, they've all got responsibilities. So it's going to be hard for them, it'll be hard. But then you need younger players coming through to get the names to carry that on after. So. It's, I remember John Lowe saying to me once, it's all right winning for a year, let's see what you like after 10 years, let's see what you like after 20 years. And, and, and it ran, I didn't realise what he was talking about at the beginning, I thought, what are you talking about? But now I know, what he, I know exactly what he meant. You know what I, mean? I remember him saying to Peter Manley, you've got to see, it's all right having a year, which is great, but doing it the year after, the year after, and the year after, like what I did, what, what Gary Anderson's done, you know, what all the top players have done, Michael, Barney. So them, uh, Dennis Priestley, you know, them are the ones you've got to look at, the longevity. So, absolute pleasure talking Thank to you here as always. Thank you very much. Thank you, no problems.